Hey everybody, welcome to Crosswinds Church, where we're all about this vision of growing closer to God and going into our worlds. No matter who you are or where you're joining us from, there's a place here for you. If you'd like to attend one of our services, you can go to cwcmv.org forward slash sermons to check out the times, upcoming sermons, as well as view previous sermons. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the service. All right. Good morning, church. Yeah. Good to see you all. Uh, If people are outside, we're doing church outside as well. But if you're making your way in, we're about to start. Uh, We're going to kick this off in 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 a little bit of prayer and some praise. If you're online, welcome this morning, and let's let's just offer this to the Lord, Father. We thank you for this opportunity and this this moment to come before you as a church to worship the name of Jesus, to worship you, Father, Holy Spirit. You are wonderful, and you're worthy of what we're going to do here. So we just offer ourselves before you and say, come, bring your presence, and do what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Ah, oh, joy to be in the house of the Lord, amen? Amen. All right, please stand and join us. Yeah. Oh, we worship the God of our salvation. Here we go. Come let us worship our King. Yes. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. We serve a mighty God. I see what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. Yeah. He has done great things. You conquer the grave You free every captive And break every chain Oh God You have done great things We dance in your freedom Awaken oh, alive Oh Jesus, I say you Your name lifted high Oh God You have done great things yeah. Oh, great is the Lord Great need to be praised
If there's ever a time in the church we need to be unified, it's right now. We need to have a unified presence, a unified message. We need to be all about the gospel of Jesus Christ because as you see, there's so much going on globally and nationally where our world needs, needs the presence of Jesus. And so let's, let's pray not only for our service here, but also for our world around us and pray that God would do something in us and through us and through his church. Amen? Amen. Father, we come before you this morning and... As we see so many divided in our country, and it's amazing how quickly division can come. Father, we don't want to stand idly by. We don't want to, we don't want to hurl stones at others as we see so many doing. But Father, we want to be part of what you said in your word, God, which would be ambassadors of Jesus Christ people who are filled with the Holy Spirit and filled with the gospel, a good news of love that conquers the grave, as we just sang about. Love that can conquer racism. Love that can conquer any sort of thing, any disease, any problem, anything that happens in this broken, fallen world, God, that we could stand together Even if on small moot points we disagree, we can all agree on the name of Jesus Christ and how, God, you step down from your privilege, you step down from your rights to heaven, and you came to this earth to humble yourself, to serve, to seek and save those who are lost. And, God, we know there are plenty who are lost in today's world. And maybe in some way or another, Lord, we're feeling lost this morning. And we seek you, God. We humble ourselves before you and we say, have your way with us. Make us into your image because your image, Jesus, is the image of God on earth. And if we're that church, we're going to be agents of healing, of hope, bringing faith and love to this world, bringing truth, bringing grace, bringing you. And so, Father, we're asking that you would use us as a church in this world. You would use your church, by and large, Lord God, not to bring division. Oh, Lord, but to bring the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and a dying world that needs it. And so, Father, we say, here we are. Fill us now. God, take take us as, as... as this little reflection of your family on earth, God, and use us. We pray healing over Moreno Valley, over Riverside County, over California, over the United States of America, to the world beyond, Lord. We pray that you, God, would work and you would override what the enemy is seeking to do, which is bringing, again, division and destruction. And you, O Lord, know that he, Satan, is defeated. And you defeated him on the cross, God. So his power is, is, is useless against the name of Jesus. And so we boldly proclaim that name, Jesus, and we pray for your glory upon this world that you would continue to do what you do best, which is bring people who are far from you into relationship with you, restoring lives. We pray, Lord, with passion as a church. We say, God, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray this in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. 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 We need to keep those prayers going. Let's keep that going. You can give a round of praise for God because he's going to do a work. He's going to do a good work. Yeah, we're keeping our eyes on them. Good to see you, brothers. All right, well, if you are new to the church, you can uh, visit the Next Steps table. Tina's there, and you ought to meet her if you haven't met Tina yet. She's great. If you're online and and it's your first time, click I'm New and make sure uh, we get a chance to meet you. We'd love to do that. Uh, A couple of things. Oh, one is that uh, we have this thing we do around here. It's script cards. They're basically gift cards to buy stuff you'd already buy. But when you use those cards, a percentage of your purchases goes back to the church. That's kind of a cool thing. And if you're you're part of that or if you'd like to know more about it, after the service, you can go out the doors, go down the hall left, a little little conference room over there. A lady named Lori Painter is over there, and that's the ministry she's charging up. Uh, Also, VBS is, is coming up in July. We're doing 
doing something different this year. It's exciting, yes. I see you're excited about that. It's more in-home this year. So we're branching off into our communities to bless the kids of our neighborhoods. We've had several homes sign up to host these kids, which is very cool. Thank you for signing up if you signed up. And um, if you want to know more about how to be part of this, you can text Kathy Davis or text VBS to the number on the screen. And then Kathy, who's uh, leading up uh, VBS, she'll get a hold of you. We have an instructional video on how to be part of it. It's a training video. And so make sure you do that. Uh, as we said at the top in the, in the prayer, you know, very uncertain days that we're living in right now and just wild things happening. It just seems overnight there's just one thing after another. We want to make sure as a community we're staying strong and that's why we have these uh, what we call life groups throughout the week. And so if you want to find out how to get to know some other believers in this church, get to know some other people in this church, you'll find there's lots of people and if we come together in relationship, it's a really good thing. Again, go to the next steps table and see Tina, or make sure you make a note of it in the chat if you're online, and we'd love to get you connected to a group. Uh, the cafe has been approved. It's now open. It's so exciting to see that. And the reason why we have that, again, the mission behind that is we'd have another space for people to get to know each other, to pray with each other. I already saw people fellowshipping in there uh, before service started. So go check it out today. Uh, there's a cafe crew, wonderful people to volunteer with. If you're not volunteering anywhere in the church, you might check this out and stop on by there and ask them about that or stop by the Next Steps table and, or let us know online and, and we'll get you, get you the information on that. Uh, stay connected. You know we have the church app. We have Facebook, uh, YouTube, and, and our church website. We have all these outlets so that we can, during the week, uh, make sure that we, again, have that uni united front. Uh, if you've been giving, tithes and offerings, what a great way to worship the Lord and continue to do that. Some instructions on the screen for you if you haven't figured out how to do that. But I'd like to invite Pastor Willie up. He's got something for us. No, I would not like to invite him up. Uh, I'd like to actually do one last thing before I invite him up. Yes, isn't that fun? Uh, we want to, uh, I should have looked at my notes. We, we want to make sure that all of our grads are um, appreciated and honored, especially during this really strange year where graduations have been thrown off. So we put together a video for them. And feel free if you're in the room or if you're out in the parking lot or if you're online in your living room, feel free uh, when we say these names in the video, I'll be saying them because they can't see the video outside. But cheer for our grads. We have 17 grads from elementary all the way through college. College, and you'll be seeing their names on screen. And so as I say their names out, feel free to, to, to cheer for them. Let's go ahead and play the video. Graduates, we love you and get ready because we are coming to Ding Dong Ditch, your house. Here we go on our way to bless some grads. All right, we have Sean in. Yeah. Danny, one of our junior hires. Daniel. Chris, Gabe, Cub, Taylin, all right, Jacob, now we're getting into our high schoolers, Jared, Catherine, Sarah, Ella, yeah. Alyssa, now we're getting into our college students. Here we go. Riley, yeah. Haley, yeah. Danielle, yeah. and I think last but not least, Kelly. Yeah. Hey, to our grads, 17 grads, much love. We love you guys. Yes. Amen. All right, I see you back there. Rick and Rennell Wolf, would you guys come forward, please? They're going to hate this. <laughs> as you know, the cafe is done, and uh, we as a, an elder board on behalf of the church, we just want to uh, just honor Rick and Rennell, uh, Rennell mainly for the work that she's done on the cafe, as well as all the other stuff that she does, and Rick as well, uh, with our great security team, keeping us safe around here, putting in lots of hours. These guys go above and beyond, and we uh, just want to recognize you and thank you, uh, and we have somewhat of a token of our appreciation for you guys as well. Let's give a round of applause yeah. for them. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.
Yeah. Amen. Well, let's continue to worship this morning.
living hope, our strength, our shield, our ever-present help in times of trouble. You're all-powerful, all-sufficient God. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. said to his disciples, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. 
proclaimed not just to his sons, but to his beloved daughters. Not just the privileged few, but to the entire human race. To the whole creation, to all the colors and creeds, for God so loved all of us. How then can one daughter be more worthy than another? One son be more deserving than his brother? One color be more beautiful than all the rest? For it is written that no one can number his children. They will come from every nation. They will come from all tribes. They will speak all languages. And with their mouths, they will sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Therefore, we are all created in his image, not just a certain few. We are all adopted. None of us are his by birth. And we all must find the way, the truth, and the life. We all need Jesus. Jesus, the martyr. Jesus, the poor man. Jesus, the prisoner. Jesus, the teacher. Jesus, the prophet. Jesus, the resurrected. Jesus, the first and the last. He is the creator of diversity, the author of equality, the defender of the defenseless, the one who breaks the chains of slavery, the one who continues to fight for freedom. He is the Messiah. He is the risen King. He is our only hope. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus, the one who died for all. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Fill me with your spirit this morning, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Awesome day, huh? You know, uh, if uh, your kids, uh, I want you to know I got your activity this morning. It's a little bit different. I'm not going to be ringing any bells today. So you listen to the message and you find words that go along with the word there on that activity sheet. And uh, I will look forward to seeing that at the end of the service today if you're here. Uh, if you're not here, if you're watching online, then I want to encourage you to uh, let me know about that as well. Take a picture of it, email it to me. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. You know, one of the most, uh, we're, we come obviously on a communion Sunday. It's going to be a little bit different. We're going to work with you. We're going to get this done today. Uh, and as well as those of you at home, I hope you've prepared uh, communion elements so you can join with us as we remember uh, what Jesus Christ has done for us. As we continue to remember, we've been getting a big dose of it already. And so this morning, I was thinking uh, probably one of the most recognizable paintings in all of history is, uh, is the, uh, the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, if you don't know, the Last Supper uh, is a fresco. It's on the wall uh, of a church in Milan, Italy, and, it's, and it has an interesting story all by itself. During uh, World War II, this particular church was bombed, the city was bombed, and this church was bombed, and uh, most of the church fell down, but amazingly, the, the wall that contains the fresco of the Last Supper remained standing. They put up uh, sandbags to sort of protect it, but that isn't going to protect it from bombs. And it is still there, and it is still there to this day. And it's the thing that, that strikes me about that is that there's sort of a metaphor there, that nothing can strike down the work of Jesus Christ. Just as that, that painting of the Last Supper is a reminder to us of, of God's endearing love for us, enduring love and endearing, uh, God's love for us that is never going to end, even during times of, of stress and crisis and and, and and struggle. And, and our society right now is going through a lot of that as well, are they not? And yet today we come to a table that is designed to remind us of what is important, to remind us of, those, of this thing that rises above all the other struggles and trials that we have. And Jesus Christ met with his disciples 2,000 years ago for that last supper, and they were in for a struggle, a struggle they didn't even know about it, because you see, 
This is literally their last supper with Jesus. After this, their world exploded. Jesus and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He was arrested, and then the rest of the Passion Week continued. And so everything changed for these guys. And, and what a touch point for us. I mean, no sooner are we feeling like maybe we're, we're coming out of this COVID-19 thing, and now the racial unrest and the, and the, and the protests and the, uh, uh, the, the destruction of businesses, all of these things. Things that are that are happening, and suddenly we're right back into it again. Well, today let's be reminded of what's really important and what we are all about as followers of Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 26. We're going to see this Last Supper. We're going to pick it up in verse 17. If you have uh, notes on the church app, go ahead and bring those out as well. There's some questions for your small group this week. I encourage you to take advantage of those as well. These guys, these, uh, these disciples of Jesus, they were going to feel pretty hopeless very soon. And that right now, hopes are high. They're sitting here. They're with Jesus. They're enjoying the Passover meal. But that's all going to change. And, but what they're going to find out is that that very table, the things that Jesus said to them, and by extension, his saying to us as well, is designed to give them hope. It enables them to focus themselves, rather than focusing on their trials, rather than focusing on the struggles, rather than focusing on the, the stuff that's going on in our world, we can focus on something other than that. We can focus on Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. We can remember what he has done, and that's the purpose of this table, this this memorial, and, it rem and we can remember who we belong to, not only to God, but to each other. That's why I often like to say when you talk about communion, you could also call it our common union, and that's what we're going to look at this morning. This morning, as we come together in this common union, we see first that together we need to prepare ourselves for this table. And they did the same thing. Starting in verse 17, it says, Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and they asked, Where do you want us to prepare you to eat the Passover? And Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Now, as it says here, this is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That was an eight-day feast that began with Passover. And it began with this, this common meal, this meal together that they, would, uh, that they would enjoy in order to remember what God had done for them as he delivered them from bondage in Egypt. And this is an, a yearly event uh, for God's people. And, and they, in order to celebrate this, they would have to prepare the place for that. They would have to prepare certainly the elements. They would have to get together the various aspects of a Passover meal. But they would also have to prepare the house that they were in. And of course, this is a borrowed house, so they had to make a little extra preparation here. They had to make sure, essentially, that there was no yeast in that house. Because you see, yeast was a symbol of the evil influence of Egypt. And so yeast came to be known as the, uh, a symbol for the influence of sin. And, and Passover here is, is commemorating leaving all of that behind. And so we have to clean all of that out of the house. That's how they prepared for Passover. Well, of course, guys, in a similar way, we need to prepare ourselves as well. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-seven 27, that we need to come to this table in a worthy manner. That means we need to come in a way that is, that is worthy of being in the presence of Jesus Christ. Therefore, he says, you need to examine yourself. And we're going to spend some time this morning doing that. We need to examine ourselves. Ask the Lord Jesus, as David said, Lord, uh, search my heart. Show me if there is any wicked way within me, if there is any yeast, any sin in my life. Do I have issues between you and I, Lord? Do I have issues between you, uh, between myself and my brothers in Christ? And as God brings those things to mind, he says, you confess those. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And you sweep that clean and you repent of that. I will not do that again. I will turn from that. You ask, as we saw last week, for God to fill you with his Holy Spirit, with the power necessary to walk the walk that he's called us to. And together, that then leads us to this next event as we, as we uh, our, our common unity leads us to then together look within ourselves. 
Jesus interrupted the meal. Here they're going along, and, and of course, these guys had experienced this meal uh, their whole lives, every year. And Jesus interrupts this meal with somewhat of a startling statement. We see it in verse 20. It says, now when evening came, Jesus was uh, reclining at the table with the 12 disciples, and as they were eating, he said, truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. Now that's pretty troubling. You know, you think, I mean, this is going along just fine, and now suddenly we realize that somebody's going to betray Jesus. But it's even more interesting to see how they responded to that. Look at verse 22. Being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, surely not I, Lord. Now, obviously, we know from the perspective of history that Jesus is talking about Judas. We, we know that Judas has already made plans. Everything's in the works. He's, uh, he's, he's gotten his, his uh, 30 pieces of silver. But, but it's interesting here that all of the disciples are questioning now, is it me, Lord? They're all questioning their own commitment to Jesus. What does that tell me? It tells me that they knew, like I know, that they were very capable of being the one that would betray Jesus. And so Jesus, of course, knew who the betrayer was. We're going to see that in very starkly in a second. Jesus knew exactly who he was talking about. But by saying it this way, what he's doing is allowing the others to realize just how weak they are. And guys, that's not a bad thing. You see, when we begin to see ourselves honestly, then we begin to realize that I need Jesus in order to be the one, in order to live my life in such a way that I am not betraying him, that I am not betraying what I say I believe. And now Jesus gets specific with them. He talks directly to Judas. Verse 23, he answered, he who dips his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is to go, just as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, said, surely it is not I, Rabbi. And Jesus said to him, you have said it yourself. <laughs> you see, what I think is happening here is Jesus is giving Judas now an opportunity to repent. He's given Judas a chance to change his ways, to come to that saving knowledge of himself. He's letting him know, these Judas, this Judas, this is the consequences of what you're about to do. It would be better if you weren't even born. Is this, and so what is Judas' major problem here? Is it that he is betraying Jesus? No. Judas' major problem here is that he doesn't know Jesus. That he doesn't have a relationship. He doesn't have to know him in the, in the way scripture talks about. He, he knows him as a, as a follower, as a friend. In fact, it's even seen, what did the rest of the disciples say when they asked about whether it was them? They said, Lord, is it us? Is it I, Lord? But what did Judas say? He said, surely it's not I, Rabbi. <laughs> There's an indicator right there. He, he, Judas saw Jesus as a teacher the rest of them saw Jesus as their Lord, as the boss of their life, as the one that they were giving everything up for. And guys, as we look within ourselves this morning, what answer am I giving? Is Jesus a great man? Is he a great moral teacher? Is he a rabbi or is Jesus my Lord? This is, this is a, a memorial. Well, I mean, it even says on the front there, we do this in remembrance of him. And so part of coming to this table in a worthy manner is knowing him, having a relationship with him. I, I'm, I'm memorializing someone that I know. It would be like, if I, if I were to do otherwise, it would be like going to a funeral and somebody comes in who has no knowledge of the person uh, who has passed away and, and gives a whole speech, gives a whole eulogy for this person that he's just made up. I mean, that would be unworthy. That would be disrespectful at the very least. To come to this table in a worthy manner means to come knowing Jesus Christ for who he is as Lord and Savior and actually living your life that way, putting him in that place in your life. And we do that when we recognize that, that Jesus Christ has died for my sins. And he did that because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we've taken advantage of that opportunity. Hopefully you have. But if you haven't, I have good news for you today. You can become worthy right now. You can come to this table in a worthy manner by saying yes to the offering of, that Jesus Christ is, is holding out to you. And that is his life. That is his, his death on your behalf. 
We call it the ABCs. We say, number one, A, you have to admit your need of a Savior. You have to come to that point of recognizing that, no, I don't know Jesus Christ and I am lost without him. There's no way. As, uh, as Jesus said to Judas, it would be better if you weren't born considering what you have in store for you without Jesus. But then the B says that we believe that Jesus Christ is that acceptable sacrifice. God said that only by the shedding of blood, there's salvation only by through the shedding of blood. Jesus Christ shed his blood in our place because ours wouldn't do it. And then C, you have to make a choice. You have to decide on your own, yes, Jesus Christ, I want you to be my savior. I want to follow you as my Lord. And if you haven't done that yet, why not today? Why not right now? Pray right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, I realize this is me. This is something I need to do. Become my Savior. Come into my life. Take control of my life. Be my Lord. Not a bad prayer for all of us. Be my Lord, Lord Jesus. And then I'm ready to come to this table in a worthy manner. Well, the next thing we see is Jesus Christ reinterprets the elements of this table. Again, these guys have done this for their whole lives, every year. They knew what to expect, uh, but often Jesus Christ doesn't do what we expect, right? So together, we look back next. Now, they were supposed to be uh, remembering the Passover. Instead, Jesus here is going to tell them what's to come so that from this day on forward, we then come to this table regularly to remember what happened on this night. Verse 26, while they were eating... Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body. And then he had taken a cup and given thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. You see, as we continue to be reminded at this table, we know that we have to continue to feed, if you will, on Jesus. We have to realize that his broken body and his blood did a real work in my life. And that's a continuous thing. And no matter what is happening in the rest of the world, no matter what kind of unrest is brewing, no matter what kind of viruses are floating around, this is the truth. This has really happened in my life. But the cool thing is that we're not just talking about a history lesson today. We're not just looking back like old people tend to do and and thinking about the good old days. Oh, remember what it was like when we were back there in the Last Supper? Remember what it was like when Jesus came into my heart? No, Jesus also says we have something to look forward to. And together in our common union this morning, we look ahead as well. Look at verse 29. I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Among the many elements of the Passover meal, there were four cups of wine. And these four cups of wine commemorated the fourfold promise that God gave to his people as they, were, as they left Egypt. And we find them in Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. Say therefore to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from their bondage. I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And then I will take you for my people, and I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians." And so we see the four promises here. The first one is this. He says, I will bring you out. That's their first problem. That was the symbol behind the first cup. The second cup was, I will deliver you from their bondage. That's the second cup. And then the third cup was the third promise, I will also redeem you. And then finally came the fourth cup, I will take you for my people and I will be your God. You see, Jesus knew what was coming for these guys, and he knew what was coming for us as well. He knew it was going to be hard. And so what he is doing in this statement, when he says, I uh, I will not drink the fourth cup, I'm going to hold on to this cup until I drink it with you in my kingdom, he's giving us hope. He's giving us something to look forward to. Because you see, like Israel, we also, as God's children, have those four promises. He has brought you out from the situations that you were in. He has delivered you and me from bondage. He has redeemed us by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. But he says, I'm not going to drink that fourth cup yet 
Why? Because there is more to come. Heaven is even, is even greater. Heaven is the fulfillment of all the promises. Heaven is when he says, I will take you for my people and I will be your God. We will be there together, physically enjoying the presence of the Lord together. Together we'll drink that fourth cup. And then it says in verse 30, when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And again, within a few hours, their world was going to fall apart And I think to myself, who knows? I'm through trying to figure out what's going to happen this week. It's hard sometimes to make plans because who knows what kind of thing is going to break out this week? What's going to, what's going to happen? What viruses, what, what kind of protests are going to happen? But guys, here's the thing. No matter what happens, like the disciples, we have our purpose. We have our commission. We've been hearing about it all morning. And ultimately, guys, we have that hope that Jesus gives us here at this table and reminds us of. We have heaven. There's going to be a party. And Jesus will be there. And we'll be celebrating. And guess what? If you know Jesus as your Savior, you'll be there too. Sin and suffering will be gone. People who have, who have suffered and died are going to be there as well, those who know Christ. But best of all, you'll be there too. And when all people have gathered, Jesus will pick up that cup, he'll hold it up, he'll drink it at last, and a whole new world will begin. A huge cheer, I can imagine, will go up. It's got to be the greatest happening of all time to that point. And guess what? You'll be there if you know Jesus Christ. Think of the impact of that. You know what's wonderful about it? Well, let me share that with you. The Apostle John actually saw this event. And he wrote about it in Revelation 21. Listen to how he describes it. He says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and, they, and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, to the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life, and those who are victorious will inherit all of this, and I will be my God, their God, and they will be my people. And you know what is best of all? You will be there. We will all be there. And this table is a reminder of what he's done And it's an anticipation of what is coming. And I've said it many times before. You know, when you you think of of an important event that you're looking forward to, you can go through a whole lot of things. Let's say I've got a trip to the Holy Land in six months. and, And I could have difficulties and trials leading up to that point. But in the back of my mind, there's always the sense of, yeah, but I'm gonna be in Jerusalem. I'm gonna be in the Holy Land. And if you wanna contribute to that fund, you feel free to do that. But... (laughs) But that would always be a thought in my mind. Well, guess what, guys? When we go through these struggles, when we go through the, the protests and the viruses and the masks and, the, and all the stuff that we're having to deal with, realize this. Heaven is coming, and you're going to be there. We're going to be able to experience that. And that's why he gives us this table, to memorialize that. If the worship team could come forward, as well as those who will be serving this morning, let me share with you a little bit of how we're going to do this. It's a little bit different this week, Uh, obviously. We have, uh, we're not allowed to pass things around in an unsanitary way, and so you're going to be getting one of these little cups, and uh, they'll be coming out to you in just a, a couple of minutes. And I want to encourage you as we take part in uh, the bread, there's a plastic tab that is on top. Pull that tab and there's the bread, all in a sanitary fashion. And then the second level, you pull that and you can drink the juice that is in that cup. When the servers come by, they will uh, offer you 
they're going to they're gonna be uh, handing you everything. You don't need to, uh, you don't want to reach in there and grab anything. Uh, we'll also have someone with all the servers who will have hand sanitizer if you feel the need to do that. With all that said, if you don't feel comfortable in taking communion, don't feel bad about that at all. We totally understand, but uh, we want you to know that if you do take communion, that we have taken uh, every precaution that we can imagine to make it as safe as possible. And uh, for those of you at home as well, I hope that you've uh, gathered the communion elements and that you are enjoying this with us as well. Let's go to prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again that we have to come into your presence, Lord, and to be reminded not only of what you did, Lord, but of what is coming for each of us who knows you as Savior and Lord. Father, we want to be worthy. Would you search our hearts? Would you show us if there is anything in our hearts, in our lives right now that we need to clean out uh, through the power of your spirit within us? Mm. Lord, search me. Show me if there is any wicked way in me. Mm. And then as I confess that to you, I know, Lord, that you are faithful and just Mm. and you will forgive me of that sin and cleanse me of all unrighteousness and we can then partake of this meal together in a worthy fashion. Mm. Father, we thank you for these things, for all that you've done for us, and Lord, we look forward with anticipation to what you are going to be doing for us. And so, Lord, now, would that be foremost on our thoughts as we move on from here? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
that's what we're going to do. We're going to live in remembrance, and that's why we've come to the table. As you've heard this morning, you can peel back the first one there, and we're going to grab the, the bread here. And this is, this is just a reminder of what Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. And we know the Bible says greater love is none than this, that someone would lay down their life for another, and yet we have God in human flesh, Jesus Christ, who lays down his life for you. Amen. This is worth taking and remembering the price he paid to cover our sins. Amen. Amen. Let's take this in remembrance of him. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And his scripture says Jesus, Jesus took that cup and he blessed it, and reminded them that he would not be drinking of it himself, but we do in remembrance of him. And it strikes me that as we take these elements uh, into ourselves, into our bodies, they, they literally become a part of our body. Yet another picture of what Jesus Christ, uh, who he is uh, in us. He is, he is we in, in him and he in us. And so it's another reminder for us, as well as that great reminder, that great anticipation that there will be that time when we drink this cup with him in glory in his Father's kingdom. And boy, we're looking forward to that. So let's drink this in remembrance and in anticipation of him. Well, as we read in this passage, they sang a hymn and they went out. We're going to sing one more song, and uh, we're going to take our, well, we won't be taking it right now, of course, but uh, we always have our brotherhood offering, which is an offering that we take in order to help people in very tangible ways, uh, mostly in our congregation, but sometimes even outside of our congregation. As God has, has blessed you, we urge you, we encourage you to um, make a donation to our brotherhood offering just on the envelopes provided. Just do designate which is your regular offering and which is the brotherhood offering. Uh, let's stand together and we'll worship him one more time uh, mm -hmm. as, we, uh, as we finish this up today. Father, we do thank you for yes. the memories that we thank have, you, the memories of the reality of who you are. And Lord, may these memories, may this hope sustain us Though the world may be uh, going to pieces all around us, Lord, and, and your, your word even promised us that that's in fact what's going to happen, none of this should take us by surprise. But Father, we of all people, we should be able to stand, st stand tall, stand sure, and, and Lord, continue to be sharing with others the hope that we have within us when they ask us. And Lord, they're asking us now because the world is so dark right now that our lights, the light mm. of your son, Jesus Thank Christ, Jesus. shine even Thank brighter. So Father, Thank open you, our mouths, Jesus. open our lips. May Thank we be you, those, those encouragers you, to this world that you've called us to in the midst of the struggles and trials. Father, may we be emboldened through what we have remembered here this morning. May it sustain us throughout this week and beyond. We pray and thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Sing us out. The Lamb upon his throne, our Calvary. 
And there's a unity here. There's a unity here in the church, and it's all because of Jesus. There's a disunity out there, and it's all because of everything else. And God put it on my heart this week that we should be as representations of Jesus, twice listeners and half the time speaking. Hear what people are saying out there. There's, there's division happening because everybody wants to be right. If there's anything that's going to bring division from this church out to the world, let it be the name of Jesus Christ. And I don't mean that we want to purposely hit people over the head, but just remember as a church, we are not political pundits and we are not news anchors. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having an opinion and sharing something online or anything like that, but just remember the name that unites us all, which everybody needs to hear. And if there's going to be anything that either brings salvation or whatever it's going to bring, come what may, let's first and foremost remember our calling as they took communion and they went out together after singing a hymn. They had a message. Yes. And the message was the gospel of Jesus Christ. All I'm saying here, if you hear nothing else, is don't get distracted as we go out there. Remain unified on that message as a body of Christ and let that message of love and truth and grace and hope and mercy and and everything else, heaven, let that be the thing that's first and foremost on our tongue. And that's gonna come through relationships with each other, with Jesus, and then out there in the world. Amen? Amen. All right, well, let's go out and praise our Lord. Thank you for joining us online in the parking lot. We love you in the quad. We love you, and of course, we love you in here. Everybody, let's praise God. Amen. Here at Crosswinds, we believe this vision of growing and going can change your life and the world around you. Crosswinds Church is a nonprofit, which means it operates from gifts given from people just like you. When you give, your money goes to creating opportunities for people to grow and go all over the world. I would love for you to be a part of that. And you can give a gift right now by clicking on the Give button in the top right corner of this page. Or you can go to cwcmv.org slash give. Join us and join what God is doing through this vision of growing and going. And have a great day.